guys, welcome back to the channel. Captain Jason O'Brien, J-O-B Fishing. So, I know I promised you guys earlier this year a full walkthrough of Daredevil, and uh, I've been absolutely crazy busy with charters and everything else, and the warehouses, which I'll show you guys later. Had a few blow days, so I'll take opportunity and show you guys and go through, and I'm gonna try to go as quick as I can. There is a lot of options, there's a lot of stuff. I'm not gonna take a lot of time going deep dive into a lot of the stuff. If you have any questions, uh, message me, leave a uh, comment below, and uh, or reach out to me uh, through email or give me a call, and I will be more than uh, happy to go through any questions that you have. So guys, this is a 2022 Weld Craft with a D, 300 Cutty King. It's a heavy gauge aluminum boat. It's manufactured in Washington State. We put on a lot of item option items at the manufacturer, as well as uh, items uh, from the uh, the dealer itself. The dealer was Reed Yacht Sales out of Michigan. They were absolutely fantastic. Um, we did go through some supply chain, not gonna lie, some supply chain issues. However, the overall experience was, I mean, we, I couldn't have asked for anything more from Reed and from Renaissance, which is the parent company that owns Weldcraft. All right, guys, moving into the front. So up here, we have a large V-berth um, mattress um, bedroom. So we got some side windows in there, uh, separated cushions. So we have access to the Dometic uh, air conditioning reverse heating cooling system, which is actually controlled up here. So what we did have done was the Reed Yacht Sales went ahead. So on the, on the port side, there's a large cushion, or there, actually there was a large opening. That opening was used to get down into this side of uh, the port side of the boat. So coming down here, this is access to inside here. This is actually, there's a mattress. We actually had that. There was an option at the manufacturer to have a mattress added here. So inside there, believe it or not, you could probably sleep at least one person, possibly two small people. Uh, it's got USB ports in there. It's got night lights. It's got uh, heating and air conditioning down there as well. Uh, I typically, I've, I've, I've removed the uh, cushion in there. I keep a lot of my tackle and uh, storage when we're going on longer trips. This is a great area because it's absolutely huge uh, down there for provisioning. And so our supplies and what have you. So what we did have was uh, Reed Yacht Sales go ahead. They actually fabricated inside the, the uh, berth here, a panel and a custom cushion to match exactly the rest of it. So when Melissa and I are doing long trips, we have a nine and a half foot uh, bed so we can sleep uh, side to side, no problem. And have plenty of room in there. Inside there, there's also cubbies. Obviously we have the hatch, they have, uh, if you look all around the boat, we did actually put in the curtain option along. So it's just a heavy duty canvas. They, it's real simple. They snap on, they have small little Velcros, roll them up and they snap back down so that you completely curtain out the entire uh, pilot house. So inside where you have the two little windows, there's a uh, little covers for that. I did have um, two covers made for the hatch. So we went ahead and put uh, four snaps up there. We have a screen so that uh, we can open up the hatch, keep the bugs out. Or we have a same material of uh, the gray uh, vinyl and we can actually black it completely out if, if we want. So typically what I have up here during charters, I got the big duffel bags. I got my type one vest, uh, flare, safety equipment, uh, safety tools, what have you. I also go ahead inside there and keep the, um, I, I try to keep uh, the uh, my rain suits and everything else that I need during the day. And if, if my customers come in with backpacks or bags, I ask them to go ahead and put it up in the berth just to kind of keep it out of the way for everybody else. So, so coming up to the, uh, the, the wall here, uh, went ahead, we, we've put on a uh, E-Burb uh, mounted there, all along with we've added a fire extinguisher. So moving over to here, um, let's go through, I guess we'll stop from the top. Obviously we have the uh, Fusion radio, I think these are the Rockford Fathgate uh, speakers. So there's four inside and then there's two speakers on the outside. We went ahead and put the two Hella fans in here. 
that can control right here. So that helps the, the defrosting the windows. In addition, we also have the wallless uh, heating system and there's little defrosters, uh, heater, air conditioner, uh, vents here for the actual windows themselves too. We have cup holder, there's a cup holder on the side. We have a lockable, um, large uh, glove box. Then we have the fusion radio system, which is also connected to the MFDs. And then we have a couple ports here and also on the other side for USB charging. Moving over to here, uh, we have the control for the uh, heating and air conditioning Dometic system. That's what's here. Um, the boat did not come with a compass. So the guys at Reed went ahead, Gorin fabricated a housing out of aluminum and put it on the backside of this uh, helm here. We put in a Ritchie compass. Uh, up top, before we get into the main helm, uh, this is a, a solid uh, three quarter inch wood. Uh, you have uh, two little reading lamps on both sides or touch. And here we have actual uh, access to a lot of our uh, equipment that's on the roof. All the wiring and uh, fuses are up here. I use this for, you know, sunglasses, if I have charts, any other books or uh, instrument covers, sun covers, I put up there as well. So starting up at the front helm, guys, we got two Simrad 12 inch uh, NSS uh, Evo 3S's. Um, fantastic multifunction displays. Uh, we pretty much have everything tied into this. So we have the Shadowcaster LED controlling uh, light controls, which all the speakers have backlighting LEDs. We have LED light strips throughout the cabin. We have them in the fishing cockpit, as well as underwater lights. Uh, we have the uh, shadow casters. They're actually like uh, 10, I think they're 10 inch light uh, bars that are actually connected to the top side of the trim tab. So they could basically, and you have full control over uh, the uh, lighting through the lighting, the uh, shadow caster lighting uh, uh, module that's actually connected to the MFD. So other stuff that we have here, we have the uh, charts. So we use uh, Navionics. Uh, we have the 2D high chirp sonar in the back. We have an Airmar. I think it's a TM185 um, one kilowatt transducer. Uh, we also have a 3D structure scan module uh, and transducer in the back. So we have uh, side scan, down scan, 3D sonar. Uh, we have the Halo 24 radar that you can overlay on top of uh, different screens on this. We have the nav uh, navigation module the video so the video option you have the ability to go through the uh, ip cameras now you can see here that's looking at the back cockpit we have it forward facing in addition you also have your FLIR night vision this is the actual joystick for the FLIR, so you can control all your stuff here you're actually seeing the actual FLIR night vision actually on the mfd as well okay you know other stuff like normal stuff you have instruments the yamaha um, CL5, we have a Yamaha CL5 over here and it can be duplicated onto the MFDs as well. So moving down from there, we have, these are the four remote battery cutoff switches. So you got the house battery port, starboard motor and the winch, which also controls all the instruments and the uh, Cisco fishing system outriggers as well on the top. So uh, another thing is you got all the actual, uh, you know, so moving down from there, you have all these switches. These control things like your lighting, your cabin lights, flood, your horn, uh, any uh, accessory buttons, but they're uh, you know, flush toggle mounted metal uh, switches. Coming over to this side, you have a CL5. This is basically a Yamaha CL5, which is a engine display uh, monitor. So you can actually flip through this and go into all your different uh, trip datas, engine datas, you can look at your alarms. You can, uh, like I said earlier, there's actually no hydraulics set up to this. So this is literally by wire, but with the Houndmaster 3 system uh, maneuverability package that's all tied into this, this is actually the steering wheel uh, feedback is controlled electronically. So if you want a, like a heavy feel you can control that if you want it lighter and you know uh, faster steering. You can control the rate of steering. So a side to side, uh, you can uh, you know depending on how fast you want to be able to turn when you're coming into dock. So you have all that control as well. So 
Below the CL5, we have the, uh, the uh, trim tab indicators uh, and uh, uh, controls over here. Then you have the Hellmaster 3 digital thr uh, throttles on this. You have your stay point, neutral holds, or what have you. You got your trim up and down, which you can also you know, trim up and down individually if you uh, have your uh, port starboard engine. And then on the side here, you also have your, um, your RPM or speed control. So you can bump up your speed one mile an hour or your RPM by I think it's 100 RPM. And below that, we have, uh, again, because of supply chain issues, we couldn't get into the Simrad radio because of a chip. So we ended up having to go with the uh, new Cortex uh, Vespar system. Uh, so we have it here. We have the room. This is an actual wired um, um, receiver on this. But uh, I mean, this is uh, so far, I absolutely love it. Uh, it works as a VHF. It's also the AIS system. And it also has boat uh, mod monitoring system. So through the 2G, this will actually send a signal directly to my cell phone and, and, and tell me if a bilge com comes on or if I get any type of uh, engine alarms, if I'm dragging anchor, what have you. So it's a really nice system. It's almost like using uh, cell phones. This one happens to be corded. Um, and then the other one is an actual cord list. So um, coming down from there, guys, we have the, um, do we actually have the joystick? So that's part of the Hellmaster 3 uh, maneuverability package uh, by Yamaha. So you have the joystick. On the joystick, you can control things like obviously, you know, your maneuverability, side to side movements, what have you, coming on and off the dock. It's got through five different power levels, but on the joystick, if you're in cruise control or autopilot, let's say, sorry, not cruise control, autopilot, if you're in autopilot system, uh, you can actually mon uh, uh, dodge or modify your charts using the joystick by either twisting it or actually shifting left and right. You will actually go either a one degree or five degree changes on your uh, direction. In the joystick as well, you have basically three different points on there. So you have stay point, which is more like, uh, everybody would maybe call this anchor mode. Um, so what it is, let me see if I have something here. All right, so if this is your boat, so what stay point does is if you want your boat, if you're coming into a marina and you don't want, and you, you want to keep that position exactly, uh, your heading and your uh, everything else in that position, that's where you use stay point. Now, it also has what we call fishing point. So in fish point, you have the ability to either go bow or stern fish point. All right, so if you're perch fishing and you wanna go, uh, you know, let's say stern. So everybody's fishing off the stern and you wanna hold that. You really don't care which way your, your actual bow is swinging in the wind, but it's gonna keep that stern within, you know, a foot or two of where you need it to be using the large engine. Same thing with the, if, for, well, if you could fish off the bow of uh, Daredevil. Uh, you could do as far as a bow as well. Now, in addition to that, there's drift point. So what that does is if I want to turn sideways with the wind, typically if I kill the engines, um, what's going to happen, the natural drift of this boat, it's going to push my bow downwind and we're going to travel downwind. Now, if I want to fish off one side of the boat, I can go perpendicular with the waves and put the boat and using the engines and using drift point, I can actually tell it to keep that heading or the course in that direction, but I'm not worried about actually drifting. So, and then you can actually control up to a certain point, the actual speed that you're drifting as well, using the joystick attached to the big engines. So, super cool. Other than that, guys, we have a high, uh, high water bilge alarm. Um, you have the engine control stop start, uh, everything on the uh, Yamaha engines. You have to have the fob inside the boat. It's all wireless. If this fob's not in, there's no way you're gonna stop this, uh, start this boat. Uh, coming over, this is your controls for your autopilot system for Yamaha. So you have your heading hold, you have your course hold, you have your uh, track points and pattern steers, and then you have your adjustabilities and function buttons as well. So moving forward, 
You have obviously on the top, this was the part where I said, you know, so the guys at Weldcraft at the factory, one of the things is we wanted to bring, as you can see, you can you kind of see this marbly dark gray. So we, we opted for that color. Um, and then we wanted to have the J-O-B burgundy inside. And even though you have large paneling that's pretty much carpeting that's covering most of the roof, you are getting a lot of that popping through. Your trays on both sides are red. Uh, underneath here is all red. And the nice thing with this cabinet too is your actual motors for your um, windshield wipers are inside the cabinet and hidden. So you're not having the big clunky motors out in front. But moving forward, uh, obviously guys, you can see, as I was saying on the windows, they all have screens. So you can open up all the windows and put up the screens. So coming forward here, guys, we have the, all three, the, the Mariner seats, their uh, suspension seats. So you got two over on the uh, passenger side when the captain's chair, this captain's chair is fully adjustable height back and you can actually swivel this around to face your uh, clients if you want to. Um, moving down, we went ahead and we had this, there was originally back down here, there was a drawer. We had that removed and we had a small uh, microwave, a little convection oven uh, added on, on this side here. Moving over to the kitchen. So we got three drawers here. That's a very small depth drawer, but and they're all, uh, all made out of starboard. You got uh, high strength ball bearing drawer glides throughout. This is pretty much all your electric uh, panel. Uh, and it's really, really simple. Uh, you got your uh, 110 or 120 volt systems here. These are all your breakers for all your different systems and what have you. Here you have your, you control your, uh, your shore power or you sh uh, your generator power. Here you got the Westerbeek uh, uh, generator start and stop. And it also has the information screen as far as that's concerned too. So coming back up here, obviously we have a, it's a, it's a good size sink. Uh, it's got hot, cold water, but down below we have a hot water tank. I don't know, I think it might be eight gallon or 10 gallon, but it's uh, more than enough to do what we need to do on the boat. Here you got like a little spice rack holder that's built in, of course, solid aluminum. We have a Wallace uh, diesel cooktop that uh, works actually very, very well. We have a small diesel tank, which I'll show you guys here in a little bit. But uh, when uh, this is on, the controls for the Wallace are right here. You can turn it up. And what happens is when you turn this down, there's a fan that actually blows over top of the actual uh, cooktop and blows heat into the uh, cabin. So we have the Dometic air conditioning reverse heating system uh, that requires obviously shore power or generator power, 110 volt. Uh, this here is also another form of heat. It only requires battery 12 volts with the diesel heater. And then in addition to that, so we had 72 inch golden rods mounted up in uh, the sides of the gunnels inside the pilot house. And the nice thing with that is it runs off 110 volt. It's pretty low power, but these are also the golden rods that are used in guns, most gun safes, but they're obviously a lot smaller. And what that does is it creates heat and it creates uh, enough heat and it dries and it, keep, it keeps the moisture uh, content down. So when I leave the boat, whether it's summer or winter, I pretty much keep those on when we're not around. So it just keeps, you know, one of the, the downsides with aluminum, it can tend to sweat or uh, build up humidity. So I keep those golden rods on. That was an ad that we put on uh, at the dealer. So in addition to that on this guys, yeah, so uh, uh, you have your AC uh, indicator on there. You got your galley pump, uh, and then you have your blower. So again, the, the generator is a uh, gas generator, five kilowatt. So before you turn that on, you got to put your blower on, just like any compartment uh, fuel. So then we have an isotherm. I think that's a 4.5 cubic foot fridge slash freezer. So it's got a little freezer on the top and the fridge section on the bottom. But between this and the Dometic, like I had mentioned earlier, I mean, it's, uh, we normally, we have no problem with uh, provisioning and what have you. So up here, guys, on the top, we actually have uh, a tray. It's probably about eight, 10 inches uh, deep. So we can go ahead and put stuff up here uh, while we're traveling as well. So now we switched around them in the back of the pilot house. So again, these, uh, 
these bars welded in and they run the in the entire length of the uh, the pilot house obviously we have lights here we have uh, lights track lights throughout the uh, cabin as well there's LED strips through this uh, we have the actual lights here that white or red uh, again we got uh, two additional speakers here and above the the uh, kitchen and then of course we have this uh, dinette. So the dinette's got four cup holders built into the table itself. This actually can drop down. Uh, these cushions come off and they could go down on the actual uh, the table and this actually goes into another berth. So believe it or not, on this uh, 30 foot, uh, let's call it a 36 foot, because that the, the length overall in the boat is 36 foot four inches, but in a uh, nine and a half foot beam, uh, you have ability to sleep, you know, one or two people here, one or two people down below, and possibly if you really had to push, maybe two or three people up in the berth. So there's actually a lot of areas to uh, sleep on this. Now, this cushion comes off and inside here, there's uh, more storage space, um, a little bit harder to reach. Let's go up here. So this was really cool. So. Guys, I wanted some rod holders, not necessarily, these aren't the, I, I keep up here for uh, some of the charters, but this was primarily so like when Melissa and I are going on trips up uh, around the Great Lakes, I wanna bring you know some rods with me so I can do some fishing. Uh, so I, the challenge was I wanted eight rod holders, ceiling rod holders, but I didn't want them in the main section where the rods and the handles were coming down and hitting us in the head. So I really, the, the challenge was, we ordered these taco rod holders, which are fantastic. Unfortunately, the way they were originally designed, we were only gonna be able to get uh, four rods on this side and we would have to put four on this side. So again, Brent Reed and the guys, uh, and a little bit of magic uh, and some aluminum fabrication. Gorn was able to go ahead and kind of take it apart and make some new plates up here. So ultimately what we did was we had four rod butts on this side, four butts on that side, but on the middle, you can see that he kind of doubled up so that the tips are overlaying. So this way I get a full eight rods up here and they're on the side and they're not banging anybody's head. Fantastic, he, you, know, you can actually see the plates that he went and fabricated, uh, riveted directly to the ceiling and had them all powder coated, uh, the, the uh, special gray. So obviously we got more vents down below we got some more full pull-out drawers and they're full extension. They're absolutely huge drawers. So we got two here. We got some gunnel storage in the sides. One of the things though was the bathroom. The bathroom is pretty cool. Everything in here is pretty much standard uh, the way it came from the, 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 uh, the factory. You have a pump out, you got a flush, you got a porcelain toilet, electric toilet. Works fantastic. The only thing we did in here though is uh, it came with a floor drain inside of this stall. So what we did was the guys at Reed Yacht Sales went ahead, fabricated this uh, the, um, corner sink, which has a removable faucet that can actually be brought up. And there's a clip here that you can actually put the faucet up there, close the door and use it as a shower as well. So it works very well. You can use it as a toilet and shower and you have an additional sink where you can brush your teeth in the morning what have you so again there's a light in here uh, there is not a heating and air conditioning duct in here but so far that has not been an issue so coming over to here um, the, all these panels basically lift up they're heavy duty three quarter inch solid wood wrapped in this vinyl um, and in here you have all your systems so uh, one of the things we had uh, changed was we added, so the boat came originally with a 25 gallon freshwater tank. It also has a 25 gallon black water tank, okay? So we wanted a little bit more water uh, storage so that when we're doing trips around the Great Lakes, that uh, if we're doing anchorage uh, and uh, what have you. So what we had was we, the Reed Yacht Sales went ahead and had a 35 gallon hard uh, water tank put in which is also plumbed in uh, to the fill on the side of the boat. So now we have two tanks. We have a 35 and a 25. You can see here, that's the hot water tank. So there's a hot, uh, and I, again, I don't remember if it's eight or a 12, but it's, uh, it works really well. It takes for us, if I turn on the hot water, uh, it takes about, I don't know, eight to 10 minutes during the summer to get us uh, really, really hot water. So 
Uh, a lot of the other nice thing with this guys you can have, you have access to your little diesel tank which obviously the diesel tank has an outside fill as well and again that only power or that the diesel is only for the cooktop and the heating system uh, other than that the nice thing with this boat guys so if all these panels come off you have access to all your filters your drains your uh, shutoff valves um, it's really nice to be able to work on this boat, even on the rear paneling, everything as you see was screwed down. So you remove panels, you have access to your fuel tanks, you have full access to pretty much anything. The only thing that we didn't have access to was a rear bilge pump, which uh, unless you had five foot arms, you were not getting to back to the back bilge pump. And so anyway, so uh, the guys at Reed Yacht Sales went ahead and added an additional cover uh, and a six inch hole back there so that we had direct access to the rear bilge. We're gonna, I'm gonna cut away at the end here. Uh, I wanted to show you guys the, uh, we're gonna go over to the new warehouse. I'll do a quick uh, walkthrough of the rib tender and the trailer that's not on the boat right now and we're going to show you the integrity uh, boat trailer that uh, was custom made for this boat um, and, uh, and guys e even towing this with the triple axle uh, trailer uh, with my denali 2500 i'll be honest with you it almost tows easier than my lund believe it or not i know it's hard to believe but uh, the overall weight on this boat, I know somebody's going to ask me that. Uh, I think it's 7,800 pounds dry. That's not trailer. That's with everything empty. Uh, I think with uh, full fuel uh, and water and everything else, it might get up somewhere around the 12,000 pound mark. But other than that. All right, guys. So we're in the actual, the new warehouse. This is one of the many reasons why uh, it's been such a busy year. So uh, I think, what did we close on this? Probably like around... July, end of July. So anyhow, so we moved in, uh, put up some shelving and everything else. That's a whole different video. But uh, in addition to Daredevil, this is where Daredevil will be stored during the winter. And um, actually the trailer that um, Reed Yacht Sales had made basically for, this is not a standard trailer. This is actually a trailer that was designed and built by Integrity, which is out of Michigan, and it's completely custom designed for specifically the 300 Cutty King Weldcraft. So absolutely full aluminum seed beams. Uh, it's a super heavy duty trailer. Uh, I think the gross vehicle weight on it is uh, 15,000 pounds. It's got triple axle. Um, uh, it's got triple axles. Each axle is about 5,000 pound uh, rating on them. Uh, it's got six uh, wheel uh, disc brakes. Uh, the only, uh, to be honest with you, everything on this trailer is completely welded. The only three uh, U-bolts that are on the entire trailer are actually on the, uh, the uh, tongue assembly. But uh, also we had uh, the heavy duty cargo buckles uh, put on. I think those are rated up to like 5,000 pounds of a strap. So we have one up here that holds down the bow in addition to two at the back holding down the stern. So absolutely amazing trailer uh, is again, it was specifically designed for the weld craft. So, put, you know, taking that boat, you know, an overall 36, four inches, uh, taking it on and off this trailer, it's uh, pretty much the same as putting the Lund on its trailer. So can't say enough it absolutely probably one of the best boat trailers i've ever seen made so anyway let's go over to the dinghy while we're over here all right so moving on to the mini daredevil so this is the tin uh the rib uh, that uh, goes on top of daredevil you've seen some photos i'll cut away to it right here um so Again, that crane that we went through, uh, it has a, a pick harness that was custom made by Reed Yacht Sales with the exact uh, center point of the, uh, the rib. Uh, the rib itself, it's a 10 foot Zodiac. It's got an aluminum bottom and it's a double walled uh, bottom. Uh, also, we put, added a uh, small Genesis trailer um, to go with it so that I could get it from the ramp or the dock and back here uh, safely. I uh, went ahead and uh, probably a little overkill, but we went ahead and put some cargo buckles here and on the back. So if you want to come with me here. So um, the guys over at Reed Yacht Sales, uh, they went ahead and uh, fabricated this all for us. So if you 
I'm gonna look here. So we have a cushion. It was a custom-made cushion. Um, you have two compartments here. Actually, it's one compartment. It's got two different doors in it. You may open up. Now, inside there is the main fuel tank. It's a three-gallon fuel tank. We got an anchor in there. We got a little box anchor. We got some uh, dock lines. And I also have uh, the actual ratchet straps that uh, hold it down to the roof of uh, Daredevil. And this just, uh, you see, it just snaps in. So the center console has a steering wheel with a small little tachometer. It's got switches for the nav lights. I went ahead, I added a little rod holder so that uh, if I'm on the boat getting into skinny water, um, uh, I can go ahead and store it instead of laying rods down and stepping on a break. It is a small tender. So you, when you're getting in and out of it, you have to, very be, you have to be very strategic as to where your feet are going because you may not get them back. So it's a nice stainless steel wheel, grab handle. It's got a nice little bench seat in here. This opens up as well. Uh, I added a, an additional three gallon um, fuel tank. So that way, if we're going out, let's say, like we did and then, uh, earlier uh, this year in, in August, and we went up to Georgia Bay, if we're going pretty far away from the boat, we ha always have a three gallon reserve uh, tank that I can switch out and uh, hook up to the motor. Uh, this is a nav light. It actually gets put in over here. Let me come over here. All right, so the nav light gets installed here. Got a little uh, fuel filter. So the, the rib is powered up with a 20 horsepower four stroke Yamaha with a short shaft on it. Went ahead and put the little uh, SE Sport on there to kind of give it a little bit more uh, ability to plane out and it, it helps uh, elevate actually the, the bottom a little bit and prevent roost tail. Went ahead, if you could see up front, I added a uh, nine inch Simrad or an Evo SS3S. You can have a three-in-one uh, active transducer installed with a little transducer plate I've added on there. Again, boat buckles here. So inside here, they went ahead and they made a custom cover. Inside here, you got all your electronics, uh, your, uh, your electric bus, uh, and your 12-volt uh, battery. You got your throttle. Again, this is your anchor light nav uh, navigation lights. Um, this is actually the drain plug for it. Other than that, guys, we got a battery terminal shutoff, so we can actually turn the uh, battery off and the ignition. Other than that, again, with the other stuff that's in here, some safety equipment, uh, signals, uh, daytime um, markers, life jackets, and uh, the actual harness that uh, gets clipped into the back here. There's two uh, spots there, and there's two uh, welded in uh, anchors on the front that actually house the aircraft cable wrapped in rubber, which is uh, what gets uh, hooked up to the actual crane uh, when you're taking it on and off of Daredevil. Uh, other than that, I mean, the only other thing that we uh, did different than what Reed Yacht Sales has already had on there, if you look in the back over there, there's a, uh, um, a vent that we added and on this side. so. What I did notice was this is a pretty airtight box and uh, if I put anything away that had moisture in it, so a dock line or whatever, it kind of created mold. So I went ahead and being that we're also storing another three gallon uh, extra fuel uh, tank in here, I needed to make sure that it was well vented. So I put a small vent on the front and on the back. Other than that, guys, uh, it's, I'll, I'll be honest with you, this is my, this, this thing is so much fun out in the water. <laughs> I don't know, I think it gets up to like 28 miles an hour. It's a blast. I have a lot of fun on this little boat. Anyway, let's get back over to Daredevil. All right guys, so that's pretty much it. So I'm sure um, there's so many options on this boat. Uh, I try to get as many as, as I could remember off the top of my head. So again, a, a special thank you to Reed Yacht Sales uh, all the way from Brent uh, to Matt as with my direct contact. I think it turned out fantastic. Fishability wise, it's unbelievable. Uh, so far, I've never had to use drift bags on this boat. I can get down as uh, 
slow as 0.8 using the kicker. The kicker does fantastic controls this boat. Hey, you know, Melissa and I went on a three to four week trip up into Georgian Bay and we actually lived on the boat for about three weeks and it performed perfectly. So uh, there was a couple days we actually got into some 11, 12 footer rollers and a boat just did absolutely fantastic. It rides very well. Uh, but again, thank you to Reed and Slater and Gorin and all those guys, along with uh, our uh, main contact, Bruce, with uh, Renaissance that uh, basically builds uh, Wellcraft out there in um, Washington State. But uh, again, guys, if you have any further questions about the boat, uh, if you want to learn something that I didn't spend enough time on, just contact me. I'd be more than happy to answer any of your questions. Other than that, guys, again, as usual, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, uh, hit the notification bell so that every time I release a video, which this year hasn't been a lot, but <laughs> when I do, you'll be notified. Other than that, guys, I'll see you on the water next time.